All right, so what's going on, y'all? 322, this one's a little long, so I'm gonna keep it short. They give us EA and the length. Um, we gotta find the vertical component and the horizontal component of node one. The stress is in each element, and then we have to verify the force at node one. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so just like the other problems, right? This is our stiffness matrix for 2D truss systems, right? It's EA over L. In this case, they give us E and A, and L is different for each bar, obviously, but I already figured them out here, but let me get to that in a second. Um, C is cosine, S is sine, and the matrix is symmetrical. So CS goes here, negative C squared goes here, negative CS goes at this corner, just like that, right? So again, um, I like to do a table um, for each element. In this case, we have one, two, three, right? Three bars. So one, two, and three, we gotta get the theta, the cosine, the sine, cosine squared, sine squared, and then cosine times sine, and then finally the the stiffness, EA over L. And it has to be in pound per inch. Um, sometimes they give us feet, sometimes they give us kilopounds. You gotta be careful, make sure everything's nice and converted, okay? So let's go ahead and do the first element. Again, you take it with respect to the positive x-axis, right? So the first element is 90 degrees, plus if this is 60 right here this is 30 so it's 90 plus 30 that is 120 degrees okay now if you do the cosine you'll get negative half right uh, you'll get radical 3 over 2 for sine if you square cosine you'll get positive 1 fourth if you square sine you'll get 3 fourths it's just trigonometry so I'm kind of speeding through it because this problem is pretty long and if you do cosine times sine, you get radic netic negative radical 3 over 4. And we'll get to the EAL in a second, okay? Um, for the second beam, it's at a perfect 180 degrees, right? From the positive x-axis, again, so it's this right here. Um, you'll get, for cosine, you'll get negative 1. You will get 0 for sine. You'll get, z I'm sorry, 1 for cosine squared zero for sine squared and cosine times sine is zero finally for the next one again you do it from the positive x-axis all the way to the beam so that's 180 plus 30 that is 210 degrees if you do the cosine you'll get negative radical 3 over 2 you'll get sine is equal to negative one half you'll get cosine squared will be three fourths right square this one for sine squared you'll get one fourth and cosine times sine you'll get radical three over four now the ea over l so all bars have the same modulus of elasticity and the area cross-sectional area so that means the only thing that changes is l so to get l1 right it's just trigonometry but i'll go through it um if you want this hypotenuse we know this length right here is 100, right? They give it to us. So it's cosine of 60 is equal to length, uh, in this case, length, right? Um, 100 degrees over hypotenuse. So that means your hypotenuse will be, uh, let me just go ahead and do that because I kind of confused myself real quick. So it's cosine 60 is equal to 100 over hypotenuse. Let's just label it X. That means X will equal to 100 divided by cosine 60. That's how you get 200. Now length two, that's just L, right? So this one's 100. So this length was 200, This the next one is 100. And then length three, now you do cosine 30. So cosine 30 is equal to 100 divided by X. You'll get 115.47. So now for each one, you're gonna do EA over their respective length. So if you do that, you will get 50,000 for the first one you'll get 100,000 for the next one, and you'll get 86,603 for the third one. So now that we have all those values, we could go ahead and start assembling the, the, the little matrices, and then after we'll do the global stiffness matrix. So step two, let's go ahead and do K2, right? Well, uh, one, I'm sorry for element number one, we're doing this beam first, from nodes one to two, is equal to EA over L, right? 
That is 50,000 for the first element. I can move my water. 50,000. Um, now we're going to multiply it by the 4x4 four four matrix. It's a 4x4 four four because it's two nodes and it's an X and Y component for each node. So U2 and V2. And again, it's between nodes 1 and 2. So it's U1, V1, U2, V2. Put U1, V1, U2, V2. Okay, let's do that. There we go. Make it look nice. So now we're going to go ahead and put in these cosine squared, sine squared, CS numbers. So in other words, just these three for each element. So we're doing the first element. It's one fourth, three fourths, and negative radical three over four. So they all share the same denominator, which is that four right here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. I'm going to put 50,000 over four. So I could just stick with one, three, and negative radical three. So cosine squared, sine squared, cosine squared, sine squared. So that's one, three, one, three. So that is one, three, one, three. Okay. Next one is CS, negative CS, CS. That is negative radical three. Don't let the signs confuse you, okay? It says positive here, but it's negative here. So it becomes negative here, positive here, negative here. And then finally, oh, I mean, negative C squared, negative S squared. So it's negative one, negative three. Okay. And finally, negative CS, which is radical three. Again, those negatives cancel each other out. So we could kind of just, it's symmetrical. So just continue filling it out. That negative radical three goes here. The negative one goes here. That radical three goes here. This radical three goes here. This negative three goes here. This negative radical three goes here. Okay, kind of just mirrored. That's all it is. So we're finished that one. Um, let's go ahead and simplify this number. Um, 50,000 divided by four. That is 12,500. Okay, just make it look nice. Next one, we got K of element two now that's equal to eal of element two that was a hundred thousand so let's put a hundred thousand here and same thing right this one is between nodes one and three so it's going to be u1 v1 u3 v3 u1 v1 u3 v3 so let's close it here. Let's close it here. So now this matrix. These are simpler, right? So it's one, zero, zero. So it's going to be one. Only ones where there's a C squared. But let's just take it easy. One, zero, one, zero. So it's going to be one, zero, one, zero. And it's CS, negative CS, CS. But that's just zero for all three. So it's zero, zero, and zero. Next one is negative C squared, which is negative one now. And S squared is zero anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. And finally, negative CS is also zero, so zero. Mirror it, you'll get one, zero, negative one, zero. You'll get zero, zero, and zero. So that's that one. Next one, again, I'm kind of rushing through it because it's a long video. Um, and this problem is pretty crazy. Um, we got to determine stresses and the force equilibrium, it gets pretty crazy. But next one, right? Third element. So now we look at the third EAO. It's 86, um, 603. So now we're going to do the same thing. This one is between nodes one and four. So it's going to be U1, V1, U4, V4. Okay, same thing up top, U1, V1, U4, V4. Okay, cool. So again, I'm gonna factor out the four again, just like we did on the first element um, to make it look nicer. So I'm gonna divide this by four. There we go. And now I work with three, one, and radical three. 
So c squared is three, s squared is one, c squared is three, s squared is one again. So three, one, three, one. So it's three, one, three, one. Okay, next one, cs, negative cs, cs. cs is radical three, so it's positive radical three, negative radical three, positive radical three. Next one is negative c squared, negative s squared. So it's negative three, negative one, okay? And finally, negative cs is negative radical three. Again, we factored out the four, so. That's what happened to the fourth right here. Uh, mirror it, right? So radical three here, negative three here, negative radical three here, right? I just move these in a column. So this row becomes a column now, negative radical three, negative one, and radical three. All right, cool. So we can go ahead and get started with the next step. Finally, we're gonna assemble the big matrix, force one X, force one y, force two x, force two y, force three x, um, force three y, force four x, force four y. There we go, in case you can't see. But um, that's our, it's gonna be an eight by eight matrix, these things. They're not really a headache as long as we don't have to solve each unknown, right? There's a lot of unknowns here. We only know F1X and F1Y, right? The ones here. But just FYI, these things could get pretty crazy if your professor decides to make your life hell. Now, normally I'll put an EA over L, but watch what I'm going to do. Because we can't do that here. So we can't just simply combine the values at U1, 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 and U1, U1 because these numbers don't match up. So this 86603 gets turned into, just do the math, right? 21650. So you cannot add the matrices if these numbers don't align. Now, what you could do is multiply this number into all these right here, same with this one into all these, same with this one into all these, and then you could add them. Or you could kind of find like a common factor between them. So. It gets a little bit more complicated too, but what I like to do is forget all that stuff. So technically I'm gonna do the first step, but I'm gonna save myself all the trouble. So it's U1, V1, U2, V2, you'll see what I mean. U3, V3, U4, V4, right? That's just our nodes. Same thing up here, U1, let's give ourselves some nice room, U1, V1, yeah. U2, v2 u3 v3 u4 v4 there we go and then we are going in case you couldn't see but finally the displacement vector so it's u1 v1 u2 v2 u3 v3 u4 v4 okay all right <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and apply the boundary conditions now and that's gonna save us a ton of time so u2 and v2 are fixed so that's never gonna that's always gonna be zero so u2 v2 is equal to zero okay u3 v3 same thing u4 v4 same thing so all these are equal to zero equal to zero okay that's where we're at now now what that means is we could go ahead and cancel the rows and columns for u2 right because it's zero the boundary conditions v2 u3 v3 u4 sound annoying huh <laughs> v4 okay same thing with the columns now with the rows so u2 there we go make it look nice and neat v2 u3 v3 okay uh u4 
and V4. So all this stuff's gone. Now we're just left with these four positions, right? U1, 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 V1, V1, U1, and V1, V1. So now we only focus on those. So look, there's a U1, V1, U1, V1. So that means these four are important, okay? We're going to need them. U1, V1 here, U1, V1 here. So that means these four are important, okay? We're going to need these two. U1, V1, U1, V1, that means these are important. We're going to need them. And that's pretty much it. Now, you cannot just add them like I told you. You need these numbers to be the same if you want to add them. But it's easy. This is what we do. Look. You multiply 12,500. Let's do the first position. U1, U1. Okay, so this one right here. So we're going to multiply 12,500 times 1. So that means this number is 12,500. We're going to multiply 21,650 times 3. That means if you do that, 21,650 times 3, you'll get 64,950. Add 64,950 to 12,500. You will get 77,450. Now, you got to add this one too. 100,000 times 1, that's 100,000, right? So you got to add now 100,000. If you do all three additions, you will get 177,450. That's the first one, okay? So that's what happens when you multiply these in. It's a crazy big number, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. Now I'll do the next one for the U1V1 now. So let's do 12,500 times radical 3 you will get negative 21,650. Okay, so that's easy. Cool. Now, 21,650 times radical 3, right? The one here. So, times 3 radical, you will get a nice 3,750. So, this is 3,750 minus, because this was negative, minus 21,650 that we got here. Minus 21,650. That's going to give you 15,850. This one, thank God, it's zero. So we don't do anything. So that means 15,850 goes here. Again, 21,650 times radical 3 minus the 12,500 times negative radical 3. You're just combining the terms in every position, okay? So you get 15,850. Let's do the next one. 12,500 times negative radical 3 again. That's negative 21,650. It's just a huge coincidence that they're the same number. But negative 21,650, okay, on this one. Now, 21,650 times 3 radical, you will get 37,500. Now you're going to subtract 21,650. You will get 15,849. Finally, do the next one with the last one. Same thing, right? 21,650 times 1. That one's easy. 12,500 times 3. That's going to give you 3750. I'm not sure if you can see my calculator. But I got a cheap calculator, I know. Now it's going to be plus 21,650. Okay? That's going to give you 59,150. Boom. And that's it. We got them. So what we do now is apply the boundary conditions. So we already applied these boundary conditions, okay? These were all zero. But now the force ones. So we see at node one, in the x direction, there's a positive 1,000 pounds, okay? Make sure it's pounds because we did this in pounds. Everything has to be in pounds. So it's a positive 1,000 for F1x in the x direction, okay? This is 1,000. And then in the y direction, there's a positive 1,000 going up. So what's a positive 1,000? Obviously, it's going up. So it's 1,000. Now we can make the equations. So now check this. It's going to be 1,000 is equal to 17, I mean, um, 177,450 times u1 plus 15,850 v1. Okay. And then for the next one, it's going to be 1,000 is equal to 
15849U1 plus 59150 V1. So that's exactly what I did here, okay? So 1000 is equal to 177450U1 plus 15849V1, right? Well, 50, same thing, right? I'd already done this equation. Um, and then the next one's 1000, 15849U1 plus 59150V1. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use 49, not 50. That was just so you could see how I got it, but it's the same answer. You're gonna get something very slightly different, but it's pretty much the same shit, okay? So let me flip my other paper over, keep explaining this problem. All right, so step five, this is what I'm gonna do. Don't worry, this is the last step. I just wanted to have it done by now. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna solve for U1. You could solve for U1 or V1 using equation one. Doesn't really matter which one, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put 177450 U1 is equal to a thousand minus 15849 V1. Okay, okay, so now I'm just gonna solve for U1. I just want to solve for a variable to later plug it into the second equation, and then I'm gonna have everything in terms of V1. I could solve for V1. And then I could solve for U1, okay? So if you solve for U1, you will get U1 is equal to, just divide everything by this huge number, you will get 0 0.005635 minus 0.08932 V1. Okay, so you, I'm gonna go ahead and cloud this because we're gonna need it, it's important. It's not the answer, it's just, that's why I'm clouding it. So now, step six, I'm gonna use equation two, okay? The second equation. I'm gonna plug in this U1 into here. So 15849 multiplied by these two terms. And that's gonna get rid of the U1 and leave me with pure V1s. So if I do that, actually I'm gonna write it out, 15, okay? It's going to be 0 0.005635 minus 0 0.08932 V1, okay, plus 59.150 V1. So I just plugged in U1, okay, where it was right here. Plugged in this U1 into here. I'm going to solve for it. It's 1,000 is equal to... Do the math to the algebra. 57734 V1 plus 89.31. If you solve for V1, you will get V1 is equal to 0 0.01577 inches. And plug in this V1 into here. So you could get U1 now. U1 will be. 0 0.004226 inches okay so that's the answer it said find the displacement at node one i think right what did it say uh yeah the horizontal and vertical so horizontal is just x and then vertical is y so at node one that's all it is now we have to determine the stress in each element okay after that we'll verify the force equilibrium at node one so first let's determine the stresses in each element so step seven stress if you don't know the formula it's sigma is equal to the c minus matrix i don't know what the name of the matrix is times the displacement vector um i'll tell you what the c minus matrix is it is because you're gonna need it obviously e over l times negative cosine, negative sine, cosine, and sine. And then, that's it. Oh yeah, that's it. My bad, I was gonna do the displacement vector, but no, that's it, that's what C minus is. Okay, that's what that matrix is. It's the property of the material, E and L, multiplied by the cosine, sine, cosine, sine, negative, negative, right, of the angle of where the material's at, uh, where your beam is at in this case. So let's go ahead and do the first element, okay? Sigma one is equal to the C minus matrix, which is E over L. E was 10 to the seven, right? 10 times 10 to the six, 10 to the seven. 
L for the first one is 200. We're doing the first element. So it's 200. 10 to the 7 over 200. Finally, negative cosine, negative sine, cosine, and sine. So negative cosine, negative sine, it's these right here. So first we do the negative version. So it's positive half now because it's negative, remember? So it's one half and then it's negative radical three over two. So it's one half negative radical three over two, and then positive, positive. So the signs just switch. So now it's negative one half and then radical three over two, okay? Now we're gonna do multiply by a displacement vector. This is a four by one vector and it's between nodes one and two. So we're gonna use U1, V1, U2, V2. U2 and V2 are zero. But U1's right here, it was 0 0.004226. And then V1 was 0 0.01577. And U2 was zero, V2 was zero. So let me write this down. U1, V1, U2, V2. Okay. Wow, this thing's long. And we're still got some time to go. So let me go ahead and do the full version so you can see what's going on. It's going to be 10 to the 7 over 200 multiplied by 1 half times 0 0.004226. That number is going to be 0, 0, 0.002113. So 0 0.002113. Now you would have added but this number is negative so it's going to be a negative radical 3 over 2 times 0 0.01577 that is 0 0.01366 negative one half times zero that's plus zero radical three over two times zero that's plus zero there you go do the math sigma one is equal to negative five seven seven point thirty five psi so that means it's in compression, okay? Compression, it's a negative. So that means you are compressing this thing. So that's the answer to the first stress. And you just pretty much repeat the process for the other two, right? It's the same formula, uh, property's different, L is different, right? So it's gonna be 10 to the seven, they all have the same E, right? Divided by the length. Now the length of one was 100. So we're gonna use 100 now. Okay, that's going to be a bracket, negative cosine, negative sine, cosine, and sine. The second element is negative 1 and 0, but that's positive, okay? So it's going to be 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Again, okay. our positive cosine was, was negative 1, so that means our negative cosine is positive 1, okay? And then the vector. So this one is now between nodes one. It's U1, V1, right? U between nodes one and three. So it's gonna be U1, V1, U3, V3. But these two are zero, right? All of them were zero except U1 and V1. So same thing up here, 0 0.004226, 0 0.01577. Cool, so now if you do the math again, sigma two is equal to 422.6 PSI. And this is in tension because it's positive, so it's tension. And I cover why it's tension and compression and it all comes down to these two signs. If you wanna know why, check out problem, I think it was 319 or the one before it. But it's, I, I do them in order. So check out 319 or 3, I think it was 18 I did. I can't remember. But I explain why the negative and positive, it's compression and tension. Okay. So finally, sigma 3 now. That's going to equal, it's 10 to the 7, right? E divided by the length. The length was 115.47. So 115.47. And that matrix was 
negative C, negative S, C, and S. So it's negative C, which is a positive radical 3 over 2. Negative S, which is a positive half. Again, we're looking at element 3 now, okay? Which is positive 1 half. And then the signs just switch. Negative half. Okay? We're going to multiply that by the same thing, right? It's U1, V1. Now it's between nodes 1 and 4, so it's U4, V4, right? Because 1 and 4. But, I mean, all these are 0 anyways, so it's going to look exactly the same. So U1, okay, then V1 is 0 0.01577 at 0 and 0. Do the math one more time. This one's a little more confusing, so we got to write it out. This is going to be 86602, open parentheses, radical 3 over 2 times the first one. That is 0 0.00366 plus half times the second one. And that is 0 0.00789 plus 0, right, negative radical 3 over 2 times 0, plus negative half times 0, that's 0. There you go. So that means sigma 3 is equal to a nice, perfect 1,000 PSI. Now we're finished. We got the stresses. Now last step, we got to make sure this makes sense. So this is step 8. It says verify the force equilibrium at node 1. Okay. So look, at node 1, we see positive 1,000 positive 1000 to the x and y so let's go ahead and do that let's go to a thousand and then this is a thousand okay next ones we have three bars right one going this way at 60 degrees one going this way at 30 and then the nice one going 180 well it wasn't going 30 but you know what i mean right okay so we got three bars right now this is the trick you gotta be careful you don't well you do know but you gotta be careful how you do it so the first bar this is the first one right here it was 577 forget about the negative sign for now it's just 577 second bar was 4226 right let me see if you can see right there my bad. i'm not sure if you were able to see but there you go okay um so that's gonna be 4226. Let's put 423 just to be nice. And then a thousand for the third one. Okay. Now the signs. So anytime it's in tension, it's going away from the node. So in this case, two and three are positive, meaning they're in tension. This one's also in tension, okay? Um, meaning it's going away from this node right here. So it's going away, and this one is negative. It's in compression, so that means it's going towards. I would draw it here, but I'll just put it here just so you can see, okay? It's going in, in that direction. So now, to verify the force at node one, it's easy. We just do some of the forces in the X and Y, and both of them have to be equal to zero if we did it correctly. So in the X direction, you have a positive 1,000. You have a positive, because this is going to the to the right this 577 is technically going this way okay to the right so that means it's positive plus 577 and this angle was 60 this one was 30 so that means it's cosine 60 right we want the x component so it's cosine of 60 degrees so that's that one in the x direction, we also have negative 423. Okay. We also have a negative 1,000 cosine 30. This is just statics. You should know how to do uh, what I'm doing right now. Cosine, sines, and all that good stuff. And that should be equal to zero. Okay. So now let's go ahead and make sure it is equal to zero. That's going to equal 1,000 
right, that number. 577 cosine of 60 is positive 289 minus 423. And then finally minus cosine 30, that's gonna give you 0.866 times 1,000. That's gonna be negative 866. If you do the math, you will get it equal to zero. So that means that one's good. Now some of the forces in the Y now. In the Y direction, we have a positive 1,000. Okay, we have a negative 577 sine 60 now because we want the this one, right? Uh, it's sine 60, 577. 577 sine 60. And then minus 1,000. Now this one is also, we want the X component. It's going down, right? So you go backwards and down. So it's a negative number. Negative 1,000 sine 30. That's going to equal 1,000 plus, I mean, I'm sorry. This was a negative, okay? Just FYI. My bad. So it's negative, negative. That number, 577 sine 60, that's gonna give you 500. Then 1,000 sine 30 is another 500. So yeah, this does equal zero. So we verified it. Again, I'm sorry if you didn't see the bottom part, but there it is, right? We just found the stresses, same thing, nothing crazy. But that is the whole point of the problem. So you gotta be careful, something to take away from this video. Negative is compression, positive is tension. And when you verify the forces at a node, when it's negative compression, it goes into the, the node. When it's tension, it goes outwards, okay? What else? Applying boundary conditions. This is gonna save you a lot of time, right? We don't have to worry about any of these numbers because we wanna go, we went uh, and canceled them, okay? Just crossed them out, rows and columns. Do this table. This table is gonna help you. You need a theta, cosine, sine. At the end of the day, you use every single number, every single number. And it helps you visualize it better. So it's easy to get confused if you don't do a table. But uh, what else? What else? Lengths, right? They try to trick you. They say L is 100, but you got to be careful. You got to find each length. Um, do trigonometry to find that. Uh, for 2D bars, this is the stiffness matrix. Cosine squared, sine squared, cosine times sine. But other than that, oh, one more thing. Make sure that this number is the same if you're going to add them up. Okay? In this case, I just kind of threw them in here. Remember when we were doing these big number calculations, 12,500 times one plus 21,650 times three, that gave us 177 and plus 100,000 times one, that gave us 177,450. Same thing, you could take many possible routes, right? You could find a common denominator to factor out. Um, it could make things more complicated, but in this case, we're only worried about these four in each uh, matrix, so it was worth the hassle kind of throwing them back into the into the, the matrix but yeah that's pretty much it that's the top and that's the bottom and then that's the top on this part and the bottom